we're now headed to Memphis, Tennessee. Isn't that where Graceland's at? I'm going to Graceland, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to Graceland. Yeah, so we're go. We're not going to Graceland, though. I wonder if Elvis's ghost is around. We're not going to Graceland. We're going to Memphis, Tennessee. And what we have in Memphis, Tennessee is one of the most requested topics. Now, whenever I go to 4chan and I'm talking about the podcast and looking for ideas, the number one thing people ask for is Memphis rap sigils. It's been on the Conspiracy Iceberg for a long time, back to the, one of the earlier ones back in 2017. August 2017 is when it first appeared. Oh, and I got this is I wanted to say that I, although this has been extremely requested, especially every time I go to 4chan, two YouTube users in particular, Holly Coeris and Northside, have requested this story as well. And we got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover. So this episode will probably run a little bit long. But first off, let's take a look at the phrase here. Now, out of all of them, there are a lot of them that, and this was the same thing where I go, this is probably word soup. And there have been a few that I have been able to really, really track down to an origin like Eggless Travel. So let's take a look at what the phrase means, at least what it, it purports to mean. Memphis rap sigils. It's really two things, Memphis rap and sigils. Now, Memphis rap is a very particular form of rap. It really exploded in the ninth, early 1990s, around 1994. It was growing. It had a little bit of momentum in this, like, super, like, 89 to 93. You were starting to see it bubbling up. But in 94 is when it exploded in Memphis and began to spill out and become a nationwide thing. On the West Coast, it was really dominated by gangster rap. On the East Coast, it was more of, like, a hip-hop party vibe. And as the years progressed, you started to see that coalesce even more, where you'd have a little bit of gangster stuff on the East Coast, but it was more, the big stuff was like Puff Daddy and Notorious B.I.G. and stuff like that. It was all about excess. On the West Coast, we started having the gangster rap of N.W.A. and Ice Cube and Ice-T and all that stuff. And you started to see some cross-contamination, but regionally, though, groups were trying to form their own identity. And what Memphis rap really settled into was a... Genre, a subgenre known as horrorcore. So very, very dark, disturbing lyrics. A lot of, not just like shooting people type of lyrics, but like they would use horror movie samples, whereas opposed to the West Coast may use like samples from 1970s black exploitation films. You would see horror movie samples in Memphis rap, in horrorcore. And that's how you have groups called, one of the biggest groups to come out of Memphis is 3-6 Mafia. They really, emb- these groups really kind of embraced the darker energy of hip-hop. It allowed them to establish their own brand. If you wanted the most extreme, dark rap, you listened to Memphis rap. It had a different cadence to the rap. It had a different uh, beat style, instrumental style. So they were really trying to establish their brand. And basically, just like how you had WWE with wrestling, back then WWF, and then you had WCW, when the next group jumped up, it was ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling, and they went with the barbed wire and the glass and the fluorescent light bulbs. Sometimes to stand out from these established crowds, you have to go extreme, and that's really, early Memphis rap was really focused on death and destruction and sacrifice and horror type of music. So when the idea, a sigil, we've talked about before too, is a symbol that you create for magical working. Generally, a sigil is written. However, it can also be spoken. It can be acted upon. It can be worked into comic books, television, movies, audio recordings, things like that. So when these two things were combined, Memphis rap sigils, it wasn't a huge leap in logic to think that one or more of these groups in Memphis was doing some sort of dark magic ritual. If it was West Coast rap sigil or... Puff Daddy Sigil, it wouldn't be as evocative because we don't see those artists as being particularly infused with horror elements, with dark magical elements. Now, today, Memphis rap is more likely to be connected to crunk music, which is a more form of party music. But when they were trying to establish their identity, they were their own thing, and that was horrorcore. Was every group in Memphis a horrorcore band? No. But we saw a lot of them come out of there, more so than we did on either of the coasts. So, that's the setup. Memphis rap sigils. Memphis rap, early Memphis rap, very dark, very horror-infused. Sigil is something you use with working with magic 
So the implication is dark magic was being used at some point in this. Now, like I said, this has been around since August 2017. There's been a lot of theories thrown out to what Memphis Rap Sigils means. So we're going to go through them. We're going to go through the five established theories that have been popping up on forums about what this is. And we're going to discuss them. Yeah, this episode is going to run long. I hope you guys don't mind. So the, the, the first one is, it's related to the Nephilim bases in the Appalachian Mountains. Other cities like Pittsburgh and Wheeling, West Virginia, have prevalent occult activity pertaining to it. This is a huge red pill. So, first thing, there's some sort of demon race or half-angel race, however you want to describe them. The Nephilim living underground in the Appalachian Mountains. And this is related to that. That is uh, most likely 100% not true. And the reason why... Let me back up. There may be giant demons living under Appalachian Mountains. I don't believe so. But the reason why I dismissed that one early on is the Appalachians are nowhere near Memphis, Tennessee. They're on the other side of Tennessee. Memphis is on the west side. The Appalachians are on the east side. So I kind of had to say, ah, that's probably not true. So I'm going to be reading these quotes here. So it's not... When I say I'm, it's not me. It's somebody else. But I want to read these theories to you. That shit is legit. I'm not sure if the entire genre was consciously aware about occult shit they dropped while talking about extreme violence and spreading chaos. I think subconsciously, Memphis rap embodies the dark underbelly of hip-hop. The underworld, if you will. Although Triple Six was openly devilish in their music from the start, I don't think the backwards thing works. I tried it, you know, backmasking, playing the music backwards to see what it says. And it was useless. But that's not to take away from their music's ability to conjure dark side energy from the beat alone. Then with the lyrics on top, it's icing on the cake. I'd say a good 80% of the genre is like that. Memphis was an interesting place. So now we're kind of getting to something. That the music itself, the genre itself, is infused with some sort of dark energy. Just overall. That's a layer. Because I'll tell you this right now, there is I there is an answer to the puzzle of Memphis rap sigils. And we'll get to that. But we have to put these layers down. That theory has been floating around for a while. Theory number three. The idea is sort of that because the artist producers committed several murders and the location where they took place holds a lot of leftover soul energy from the lives that were taken. The lingering energy of known tragedies in the area goes back as far as the history of the United States with some big Indian massacres, then on to slavery, then civil war, and then about a hundred years more of violence until you get to the 1990s, where Memphis was within the top five murder capitals in the country, I believe. Basically, if you believe the Luciferian idea that it's possible to take a life and manifest that energy into something that becomes real in a sort of ritual, there would be some kind of medium between the spirit world and the world we know to be true. The life energy, the death energy, the demon, the magnetic taping in a cassette. This was one of the most popular theories that was going around. That the sigil itself was the audio recording of the music. So whatever magical working one of these dark groups did in Memphis, they infused it into the music. Specifically, they recorded their albums where they had committed murders. So you kill some people, and you either kill them in your studio and record the music there, or you kill them at a remote location and take your gear there and record it. This is a very interesting idea. My pushback, I'm not going to deny the theoretical, esoteric fact that you could somehow trap soul energy in some sort of recording device. I'm not going to necessarily dispute that. The issue I have with that is it would be extremely impractical to kill people at your place of recording because now basically you are at a crime scene constantly and you always got to worry about being found out. You're taking people to a location where people know you are at and then those people don't leave. So it would be very tricky. It's not impossible, but it would be tricky. The idea of going to a place with your recording gear to a remote location where you have murdered people, back in the early 90s would be very, very hard. They did not have the portable equipment we have today. It existed, but it's very expensive. And when you listen to these early versions of Memphis rap, it's very lo-fi. They're still selling cassette tapes out of the back of their car. Nowadays, I can take a digital recorder, go into the middle of a protest in Portland, and get amazing audio and video recording. But back then, you couldn't. It, you really couldn't. However, there is a workaround to that. And we'll get to that in a second. But I think, again, now we're on the right path. The music, the genre itself is very dark. 
It's in an area that is full of tragedy. This theory here that somehow this soul energy was captured onto an audio recording. The next theory here, and this again was one of the more common ones. Memphis Rap Sigils refers to the worship of eight tracks that had mysterious properties, imbued into them via hardcore Memphis hip-hop, such as my copy of Blank of Destruction. I think you can figure out what Blank is. It's I'm not going to say the word because this is a podcast and I like having a YouTube channel and a podcast. But it's the N-word, and you guys can criticize me for not saying it, but I think you understand that's just not, it's not worth it to say it and, you know, get my channel flagged and all that stuff. So, this was the one that popped up first that I saw, was there is this group, we'll just call them Brothers of Destruction, Brothers of Destruction. There are this group, and they have a self-titled album, and that this album itself, by listening to it, opens some sort of portal. Like, this is, see, it's interesting because the... Theories get more and more concrete. One is very general. The Appalachian one is ridiculous. The other one is like just the general area is haunted. The second one is you have this idea of soul energy and death being actually transferred to a magnetic tape that's used in the recording process. And the next one is it's, we actually can name the album, apparently, Brothers of Destruction, that has eight tracks that are imbued with some sort of mysterious energy. It's an interesting theory. The one problem I found, and I could be wrong on this, but the self-titled album I found of theirs, if I remember, there's only six tracks on it. So there might be an eight-track version of that album floating around. Maybe the two missing tracks are the ones that have this energy. But you can listen to their music on YouTube. You can And a cassette tape from that band is $100 now. It's a collector's item. But you can actually listen to their music on YouTube. It's just Memphis rap. But it's not to say it isn't infused with some sort of dark energy. So, Jason... You're, you're, you're still floating around in vague land. You've listened to the music. You're not saying that you've experienced anything. You have talked to us about these theories that get increasingly more specific. What's the answer? Do you know what Memphis rap sigils are? And I do. At least I think I do. Let's move on to the last theory I have here. Very brief. And oddly specific. Did three bands really summon the god from the fourth corner over the spirits of three sacrificed children? Are there really gateways to hell in Memphis? And if it is all true, which are the bands who participated, and which albums align to form the sigil, and how is it accessed and utilized? That's the theory. That's the sigil. And this is what I mean. We're going to take a couple pieces from the other ones as well, but that is the answer. This brief sentence from 4chan is the answer, and here's why. I had to kind of break it apart to get to it. And when I first read it, I just put it in my notes. But as I continued to do research, I kept coming back to that phrase. That's the answer, guys. Let's break it apart. Are there really gateways to hell in Memphis? Not that I could find. It's not listed as one of the seven gateways of hell. It's not one of the other gateways of hell. There's like the seven official ones. There's a bunch of other ones. It's not listed in any of them. Doesn't mean there's not one, but it's not listed there. Yes, Memphis does have a dark history, but so do a lot of cities on the south and east coast especially. Did three bands really summon the god from the fourth corner over the spirits of three sacrificed children? That sentence sounds very nonsensical, and it very well might be. But, let's break it apart. So, Memphis, the name of the city, is named after a city from ancient Egypt. Memphis is also the name of a god. A water goddess, to be specific. A god from the fourth corner. Puzzling phrase. Now, I'll tell you this right now. What I'm going to say may sound very Hans-like, because I'm making these connections. And, although I say it may solve this murder and it may do this stuff, I have absolutely no proof of any of this. And I guess I probably should have said this earlier, I have no proof. These are all interesting coincidences that add up to something. But if you want to say, dude, you've gone full Hans, I totally get it. Memphis is a city that is named after a god. The fourth corner. I'm puzzled by that. What's the fourth corner? Now, this is where I start to stretch it. If you take a compass, you can name it north, south, east, west, or north, east, southwest. Very rarely do you go north, west, south, east. It normally goes clockwise or north, south, east, west. So the fourth corner we will establish is west. Now, you go, Jason. That's a reach, and that's fine. And it would be a reach if there wasn't something to grasp west of Memphis. Did three bands really summon the god from the fourth corner over the spirits of three sacrificed children in 1993? In West Memphis, west of Memphis, 
15 miles away, three boys were brutally murdered in a ritual fashion in the Robin Hood Hills in West Memphis. These boys, Steve Branch, Christopher Byers, and James Michael Moore, their deaths led to the arrest of the West Memphis Three, three local teenagers who were thrown in prison. Eventually, they got released about, what was it like, maybe 19, 20 years later. The police believe that they are still guilty. The courts still believe they are guilty. But they're released. They deny it. The makers of the documentaries, Paradise Lost, they were putting out evidence that the kids didn't do it. The kids were, the three victims were, in police words, sacrificed in some sort of ritual. One of them was castrated. All of them had multiple injuries to their bodies. And two of them were stabbed or injured and then drowned. The night that they were killed, a black man came into a restaurant called Ojangles, covered in blood, went to the restroom, left blood everywhere, ran out. Police came, got the blood samples, and they lost them. There was a single hair from a black man on a blanket at the location of the murders. Now, I think I probably goes without saying that most of the rappers in the Memphis rap community were black. You had a group of musicians who were very into dark arts, horror core, mystical energy from a darker place. Now, you can be a fan of those things and not be a brutal slayer, but if you get too caught up in the illusion of what you are talking about, it is a very easy descent to go from fantasizing about a dark life full of sacrificial rituals and blood and murder and indulging in those things. Not everyone will, but some people do. Three kids killed in West Memphis in a sacrificial way. If the coincidence is right, the fourth corner, the west of Memphis, to appease a god, a god that the city of Memphis is inspired by, a god of water, where two of the children are drowned. A year after the murders, roughly, give or take, in 1994 is when Memphis rap exploded onto the scene, both regionally and nationally. Is it possible? Again, absolutely no proof. But is it possible that three bands from Memphis simply traveled 15 minutes over found the perfect victims just walking, riding their bikes into the woods out of sight. Is it possible that three bands said, that's it. That's the sacrifice we've been asked for. We've been asked to sacrifice three boys. And there they are. We will make a pact here. And we will do this to summon this sigil, this magical working. Now, you can work the other elements of the theories into this as well, like I was talking about moving the recording equipment around. A beautiful thing about hip-hop is that you can use a sampler. So someone could have simply brought a cassette recorder and recorded the audio of these kids suffering and dying and drowning and thrashing and then take it home and plug it into their sampler. The, the recording quality of that stuff is so lo-fi, you wouldn't be able to pick it up. And I'm not saying that if you listen to an album, you'll hear a kid going, help me, mommy, help me. But you can chop and screw it. You can take that and you can spin it out and put it as an underlying track on your album. So not only have you performed the ritual, you have immortalized the ritual. And everyone who listens to that music is hearing those murders. Those murders that you got away with. Those murders that have gone unsolved for the general public, unsolved for nearly 20 years. What I think is interesting about this theory, did three bands really summon the god from the fourth corner over the spirits of three sacrificed children? That's very specific, and yet whoever wrote that did not specify. I think it's related to the Robin Hood Hill murders. What are the chances of this person making that up and not connecting it to the Robin Hood Hill murders And that happened only 15 minutes away from where this conspiracy normally started. And we can take this out of fantasy land, remove the god, remove the magic, and just have three groups saying, we need to do this. And it doesn't work. It's all fake. Magic doesn't work. There's no god Memphis running around. She she doesn't exist. 
But them thinking that she does inspires them to go kill these kids and work this sigil. I believe that's what Memphis Rap Sigil refers to. If it means anything, again, it could simply be word soup. I think the conspiracy theory behind Memphis Rap Sigils is that bands from horrorcore Memphis Rap bands from Memphis traveled simply 15 minutes west and murdered three boys to work some sort of dark magic. Whether or not the dark magic was real, I don't know. I mean, whether or not they did it is real, I don't know. And I couldn't even name which band I think it is or anything like that because I don't know. But I think that's what it means. I think it's related to the Robin Hood Hill murders. It makes sense. It works within the context. It's possible, the secondary theory, that these murders were recorded and then laid onto the tracks of certain albums. That's a side theory, but it would also make sense. If you're going to go out there and you're going to do this magical working and sacrifice these kids, you could also record it, and that would add to the plural of Memphis rap sigils, because now you have two. You have the sacrifice itself as one sigil. You have the recording as a second one. And those beats could be passed around. If I'm totally off basis, I'm fine with that, because I have absolutely no proof of this at all. At all. It's a series of coincidences, and again, it very much borders on Han's territory. And I think, really, the takeaway to this is that Memphis Rap Sigils may not only be a clue in the murder of three boys, but it may have another very disturbing implication. After the murders, Memphis Rap exploded in popularity. Again, not just in the city, but nationwide. If this story is true, if I'm not just reaching for random facts... But if these connections are true, the disturbing thing is that dark magic sigils may work. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.